Hey everyone, Nicole Steckline, Technical Agronomist for DeKalvin Asgro in Northeast Iowa. Uh, corn starting to pop out of the ground, so we're out here uh, evaluating some stands and when we've got issues, just trying to determine what exactly went on. So the field I'm in right now, this was planted a little bit earlier. I think it was put in the ground, oh, around the 24th of April. So the ground was still plenty cool, but otherwise soil conditions were good and we had warmth in the forecast. Yes, I have a helper with me today. He's out looking at corn with me. So <clears throat> what I'm looking at here is uh, it, it's bean ground. It had plenty of manure applied to it, um, heavily worked soil. So we're in some Fayette clay soils and we got some variable emergence. So we've got feet and feet and feet of row here where we don't have any corn and then we'll have a plant here or there. So some pretty variable emergence. So we're gonna do some digging and look at our clues and try and piece together both environmental, um, environmental clues with the plant clues and see what we come up with. So when we were digging, uh, really was finding a very good consistent seedling depth of about two to two and a half inches. So pretty happy with that. Um, but when we look at the plants themselves, what we've got here is a very wide variety of stages. So a lot of inconsistency, even though they were put at a consistent depth. So we've got some emerged plants here. They were at the same depth of some of these other ones but we've got some that just are shooting a coleoptile, some that have just emerged or some that have just germinated, put it that radical out and that coleoptile is just starting. So um, a lot of different stages going on. So in addition to the great variability in stages of these seeds and seedlings, um, was, also finding a fair, founding, ugh, was also finding a fair amount of seeds that were exhibiting that typical corkscrew and babitional chilling injury. So um, from what I've seen, uh, it really seems that we've probably got a lot of different factors interacting and a couple of different things that are happening in this field that are all working together. So when we look at the environmental factors, when planted, it was cool and it was dry. Now, um, in a lot of cases, there probably was just enough moisture to get that germination process started. So it soaked up some of that cold water um, and it affected some of those seedlings with the imbibitional chilling where they got corkscrewed. Um, some of them didn't get affected like that. And those are the ones that are up out of the ground already. They soaked up that cold water. They were cool with it. They came up out of the ground. So we've got some imbibitional chilling. Um, the other thing contributing to some of that chilling injury is the soil was fairly dry. When you have fairly dry soil, it is easier to cool and heat dry soil than it is to cool and heat wet soil. So those temperatures were fluctuating more because of the air in the soil being dry rather than moisture in the soil. So we had more fluctuating temperatures. Um, also these seedlings that are just starting to germinate and just shooting a coleoptile out, this is more than likely because of dry soil. It took, a, it took a couple of weeks before we really did get enough rain to get those seeds enough moisture to germinate. So the slowness of germination of some of these seeds is caused by lack of moisture. So variable stands, some of that is caused by chilling injury, uh, because of the cold soil temperatures and then the cold air temperatures that followed because we had dry soils. And then some of it is also caused by lack of moisture and variability of moisture. So overall, this stand, um, it's going to end up being acceptable, but it's also going to be of varying stages. So I'm seeing this in other fields as well, especially for the early planted corn. So get out there, take your stand counts, um, and then make your determinations now if you're going to have to do any replant because of chilling injury or variability in stands. Because they say, you you know, if you're going to plant twice, you got to plant early that first time. So get out there, take your stand counts. Let me know if you're seeing similar things as well. And then as always, call, text, or email with questions. Wait, don't go yet. I forgot to talk about soybeans. So um, a lot of the early soybeans that got put in the ground before corn, so like the week of April 20th, are starting to come out. Uh, looking at some right now, we've gone through some colder temperatures. And so these are soybeans that were planted earlier. So we've got our cotyledons out here and our first set of true leaves. So these are the unifoliates. Um, I've gotten quite a few questions about the burn already because I know that we're all worried about 
um, you know, frost damage. But these beans were treated with Olivo, and so we've just kind of got that typical halo effect right there. Um, it takes some time for these plants to metabolize that fungicide, and it just causes a little bit of, um, of cosmetic burn along the edges. This is not frost damage. We do have a couple more cool nights coming up, but honestly, soybeans, yes, we have the growing point above the soil surface, but the low temperatures are still gonna be in the 30s. To really kill that tissue, kill that growing point, temperatures really need to be below 30 degrees uh, and sustain that temperature for three to four hours. Um, additionally, the air temperature right here is gonna be at 34 degrees, but we gotta remember that the soil surface is emitting warmth off of the soil so the temperature at these soybeans is going to be warmer than it is up here so as far as frost damage coming into these couple nights we're gonna be all right okay now i'll do my outro make sure that you call text or email with questions